One of the distinctive features of John Lee's instructions on breath meditation is his emphasis on breathing in a way that feels really comfortable, feels nourishing throughout the body. Of course, this is nothing new. In the Buddha's meditation instructions, he talks about training yourself to be aware of the whole body as you breathe in, breathe out, how to calm what he calls bodily fabrication, i.e. to calm the breath. To train yourself to breathe in and out sensitive to rapture and breathe in and out sensitive to pleasure. Now the rapture and pleasure are not going to come unless the breath is comfortable. And getting the breath to the, be comfortable is often difficult for a lot of us. As soon as we focus on something, as soon as we focus on the breath, we tend to tense up around it as a way of reminding ourselves to stay there. We just focus in on something and put pressure on it, squeeze it a little bit, especially if it's something inside the body. And so it doesn't come easily to focus on the breath in a way that actually gives pleasure, because as soon as we focus on the breath, we tighten up around it. I had this problem when I was first working on this method, and John Fuang would talk about catching the breath, and I'd try to catch it and tense up around it. And one day I was sitting in a bus in Bangkok and realized that if I just let the breath flow and watch it flow, things were a lot easier. I, being a Westerner, complained to him about his choice of words. He laughed and said, catching here just means that you keep watch on it, stick with it, and figure out what is exactly the amount, right amount of pressure to put on it so you can stay with it, but you're not interfering with the flow of the energy in the body. And learning how to focus on something and allow it to flow, learning how to focus on something and allow it to relax, that's a very useful skill. This is the healing awareness that John Lee talks about when he says that the breath and mindfulness are like the ingredients in a medicine. Mindfulness is the, the actual medicine, and the breath is what allows the medicine to seep into the body. So try to work on this. Choose a spot in the body where it's easiest to stay focused, and try to focus on it in a way that allows the energy there to flow. And don't squeeze up around it at the end of the in-breath, and don't squeeze up around it at the end of the out-breath. You might call this soft focus to begin with. In other words, you're not coming down too hard on it. But try to stay with that one area in the body and see if you can sense a sense of flow there, and then stay with it in a way that allows it to flow. Once you've learned this technique with this spot, then you move it to another spot, then another spot. And you find that certain parts of the body have a better breath flow than others. In which case you ask yourself, can I actually improve the breath flow? By the way, I stay focused there. It helps to have come from an area where you've been successful or where the breath is already flowing well, and then you move it into this other area. See if you can open things up a bit. In fact, opening, allowing, these are two words that should be in the back of your mind. Think of there being breath energy channels. And try to get sensitive for the way in which you squeeze the channels, close the channels, subconsciously. What you're trying to do is bring some conscious awareness that allows them to open up. Now, some parts of the body are going to be really resistant because they've, they've experienced your conscious awareness in the past, which has been pretty roughshod. We tend to abuse the breath energy in the body. And then when we do that, it's very easy to go out and abuse other things outside. So learning to make your awareness a healing awareness tends to counteract one of the main problems in life, which is that when we focus on things, we tend to turn them into issues, turn them into problems. And this is what the first and second noble truth are all about. We want something, we focus on it, it becomes the location of our interest, and then we create suffering. 
The Buddha didn't say that everything is suffering. I don't know how many times you see this, and again and again and again. People keep writing about it. All is suffering. No, it's not. There's a lot that's not. But we're the ones who make a lot of suffering out of the things that we like and that we want, creating issues, creating problems for ourselves. And of course, it spreads out and creates issues and problems for everybody else. As John Mahabhu once noted, it, wherever there are issues in the world, it's because there are human beings there. In parts of the world where there are no human beings, there are no issues. So you have to look into the way in which we create issues out of things. and It's the way we focus on things, and then we create stories around them. Very complicated narratives sometimes. Other, other times it's more basic, lizard brain kind of narratives. But either way, we get upset by what this person said, what that person does, and what we want and what we're not getting. We don't know how to look at things in such a way that actually it solves problems rather than creating them. So start by learning how to solve the problems with your breath. I mean, this is the thing that's actually closest to your awareness, closer than anything else. Without the breath, you couldn't see out your eyes, you couldn't hear out your ears, you couldn't sense the body. All your knowledge of the senses has to come through the breath. So back up. Instead of allowing your awareness to go running out and flashing out the senses, come back and see what's right closest to the mind. What is this relationship to the breath? And see ways, see the ways in which you are abusing the breath. And by the way, you push it here and push it there so that you can push your way out through and look at other things and think about other things. Try to back up, back up and look. How are you relating to this energy that is so close to your awareness? Find the areas where it's running well and focus on those areas in a way that allows them to continue running well. And then see if you can allow that same sense of flow to flow into other areas that are not running so well. One thing you may notice as you get to know the body is that one side of the body tends to have a better flow than the other. Now, in some people, the difference is not all that marked. In other, case, in other cases, it's really strong. So if you can sense which side has a better flow, or where in the body the flow is better, then see if you can use that same awareness and bring it to the other side of the body and even things out, or bring things up to the good side. And this way you get practice in having an awareness that's healing rather than problem solving. And the more you get to know the, this awareness, the more the implications of this kind of awareness begin to work themselves out. Partly because you learn that there's something really good here that you can feed on. A sense of well-flowing energy in the body, a healing energy in the body. That nourishes the mind. And then you see that a lot of the mind's reasons for going out further and looking for issues and creating issues outside are because it's hungry. When it's not hungry, it's not so interested in creating those issues anymore. All the issues we have around what other people say, what other people do, especially people who are close to us, we begin to realize that we don't need to feed off those other people. Where we had to before. When we're not feeding off of them, okay, then we don't get sick off of the things that we don't like about what they do when they say. We now have a better place to feed. Especially if they're people who are very close to. Sometimes we realize okay, the, the things they do and say that get us upset we, because we love them so much. We have to distinguish between love and feeding. The two are very close. It's possible to have love and goodwill for other people, but without having to feed off them. And when you're not feeding off of them, then you don't get sick from the things they do and they say. So you have to look in, into your own feeding and loving. There's a science fiction story I read years back. It was of astronauts in a rocket, and they were going from planet to planet. 
in this other solar system, and they developed a, a sensor on their rocket. Which makes sense, okay, if this planet is inhabited or not, and if it is inhabited, are the inhabitants friendly or hostile? And so they came to this one planet, and as they were getting closer and closer to it, they realized, okay, it's inhabited. And they also began to notice that there were very loving little creatures out there, that this was going to be good, a good place to go. They would be met with goodwill and love, they thought. And so the rocket landed, and they saw these little furry creatures, and the sensor in the rocket was pegging out high level of love, high level of goodwill. And so they came and opened up the doors, and the little creatures came in ate them all up. For a lot of us, that's what love is, it's something we can feed on, somebody we can feed on. Once again, we want to learn how to bring your goodwill and concern and intimacy with other people. Make that a healing presence. Learn how you can have goodwill for them, but without having to feed on them. That way you suffer less, they suffer less. It's the same as the relationship with your mind or your body. If you allow the body to do its thing properly, it will provide you with a good energy here. And this is an energy that you can feed off without harming the body at all. Well fed inside, then you don't need to go feeding other places. So this is not just an idle skill or an attachment to pleasure that we're going to have to overcome. We will overcome it at, the, at some point, but it's a pleasure that's needed to overcome the pleasure you get off of other things first. The pleasure of learning how to have an awareness that's healing. And if you trained it to be healing in its relationship to the body, you can find that you can help heal other issues outside. Because you bring your awareness, alertness, your mindfulness, your ardency, your discernment. All these qualities get brought together in the quality of this awareness, which you can then apply to other areas outside where you used to create issues and used to create problems, and now you realize that you can approach them in a new way. You can solve the problems by the way you relate to things. So start with a relationship with the breath. Get on good terms with the breath. And it will teach the mind a lot of things it needs to know. It's because the breath, as John Lee said in one of his Dharma talks, is a mirror for the mind. It responds very quickly to what the mind is doing. So it's a good way of becoming sensitive to what your awareness is like, what your focus is like. And as you get more sensitive to the breath, you become more sensitive to the mind. In a way that heals both sides. <laughs>